At the end of this week's parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu says to the Bnei Levi, gather to me all the elders of the Shvatim, the officers, etc., and I will speak in their ears. On the words Hakilu Eli, Rashi explains and says, on that day they didn't blow the trumpets to gather all the people. Because in the Pasuk where it speaks about making the trumpets, it says, Asei Lecha. It was made for Moshe Rabbeinu. And he, and Velo Hishlit Yeshua Aleim, Bechayev Shol Moshe. So Yeshua did not get the rulership, the power over these trumpets. Furthermore, even during Moshe Rabbeinu's lifetime, these trumpets were already hidden away to fulfill what it says in the Pasuk, the Ein Shiltoin Biyoyimamavis wasn't, one does not have full control, so to speak, rulership on the day he passes away. So Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't have these trumpets. Now, simply what Rashi is coming to explain is why, in fact, they didn't use the trumpets that day to gather the people. Ah, you're going to say, maybe they did use the trumpets, it's just not mentioned in the Pasuk. Moshe Rabbeinu says, Hakilu, gather the people. Maybe that would have included the, the, the trumpets. But the truth of the matter is you can't say that. Because the ones to gather the Eden with trumpets would have been the Koyanim, as the Pasuk says, back in Baal Oishcha. Here, Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking to the Levim. So clearly they didn't use the trumpets. So that's what Moshe Rashi is coming to explain. Why didn't they use the trumpets? But the Rebbe's question is, what is this business about Yeshua doing over here? Why is Rashi mentioning that Yeshua didn't use the trumpets? Seemingly, all that's relevant to say is why Moshe Rabbeinu didn't use it. And that would be the answer, because ain't shilta in B'yayim HaMavis, there's no rulership on the day one passes away. If Rashi wants to tell us why, in fact, Yeshua also didn't use it, if anything, Rashi could have said this at the end, after explaining why Moshe Rabbeinu didn't use it. Some other diyukim in Rashi's wording. Number one, what's this expression? The way he didn't give Yeshua control over these trumpets. Seemingly, what does control have to do with trumpets? What does it mean to control? He should have, ju- should have just said, Yeshua didn't use the trumpets. Also, in the Dibra Masch, Rashi quotes, Hakilu like gather for me, gather to me. Seemingly, all Rashi is explaining is how the gathering happened. Why is this word, Eli, to me relevant? Says the Rebbe, the explanation is, what was really bothering Rashi was something else completely. A much more general question in regards to these words, Hakilu Eli. And it was in order to answer this general question, which Rashi does not specify what the question is, as is normally the case, that Rashi does not specify the questions that he's coming to answer. It's in order to answer this question, which we're about to say what it is, for that Rashi tells us that there were no trumpets. And by understanding why there are no trumpets, we're going to understand this general question. What is the question? In the beginning of the parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu says, I could no longer go out, come in. Rashi says that this means permission was now taken away from me, from Moshe Rabbeinu, and given to Yeshua on the day Moshe Rabbeinu passes away. Rashi also tells us a few psukim later, Dabar Echad Ladur, there's only one leader for a generation and not two leaders. In other words, Yeshua at this point is already considered the leader of the Yidin. But if that's the case, why is Moshe Rabbeinu saying Hakilu Eli? Why is Moshe Rabbeinu the one that's gathering the Yidin? Yes, it's true he wants to speak to the Yidin, but seemingly this idea of gathering the people, gathering all the people, is Shaykh to the Managadur, to the leader of the generation. So the one who should gather them is Yahushua, or at least maybe both together. What's this diuk hakilu elai that Moshe Rabbeinu is specifically the one that's gathering the Yidin? It's in order to answer this question that Rashi says, that that day they didn't blow the trumpets to, to gather the people. And, and Rashi explains why didn't they use the trumpets? Because the trumpets are, sh- are connected to Moshe and not to Yeshua. And Rashi uses those words. He didn't give Yeshua the control over them. And this will actually explain to us why Moshe Rabbeinu is the one gathering them and not Yeshua. How do we understand this? Says the Rebbe, let's go back to the Pasuk of Asei Lecha, That Moshe Rabbeinu was told, you make the trumpets, which from here we learn that only Moshe Rabbeinu is going to use them. And the question is why? We understand that it's not made for ordinary people, but why shouldn't the Mamale Mokim of Moshe Rabbeinu, Yeshua is taking over the leadership, why shouldn't he take over the trumpets as well? What do we see from this? That Yeshua did not in fact take over all matters of Mo- from Moshe Rabbeinu. He didn't get all of the ma- things that Moshe ruled over. He didn't get everything from Moshe Rabbeinu because Moshe Rabbeinu is a ruler of a much higher caliber than Yeshua. 
And this is the meaning that in the, in the words of Elohim, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't give the, Yeshua the rulership over the trumpets, meaning that not all things of rulership were given over, given over to Yeshua. There were certain things that remained by Moshe and never given over further. And this is now going to answer why Moshe Rabbeinu was gathering them. As long as Moshe Rabbeinu is alive, it doesn't make sense to Yeshua should be the one gathering the Eden. Because there's still aspects that Moshe Rabbeinu is still the absolute, only one that's in control of, and is the only leader. So it's only after Rashi explained this general aspect of what means Hakilu Eli, why it's happening through Moshe Rabbeinu, now Rashi goes on and explains that the way it happened was that they didn't use the trumpets at all then, which is the ending of the Rashi, that even while Moshe Rabbeinu was alive, it was already put away because in Shilta in Mavas, because there's no rulership on the day one passes away. The Rebbe now moves on to the Yenu Shulteret, to the wine, to the Chsidis that we find in this Rashi. And the Rebbe asks a question. Yes, it's true that the trumpets weren't used because of Ein Shilta in Biyayma Mavas, but why is it that the gathering was through the Levim and not the Koyanim? The Koyanim could have gathered them and not with the trumpets. The Rebbe says... First, by, by introducing another question. How do we understand this idea that on Moshe Rabbeinu's last day of his life, he doesn't have control. He doesn't have full control. This seems to be a Yerida, a descent in Moshe Rabbeinu. Tzaddikim generally, we know, are always going Bali, are always going higher and higher. Always going stronger and stronger. Especially on the last day of one's life is usually the greatest Aliyah. Regarding Moshe Rabbeinu himself, we know that on the last day of his life, this is when he zoicha to what's known as the 50th gate of wisdom, something that he wasn't able to experience the rest of his life. So how do we understand this idea of Ein Shilto in B'yoyim of us? Says the Rebbe that the explanation is that by Tzadikim we understand Ein Shilto in B'yoyim of us in a very, very different way. In fact, in an opposite way, that it's coming not because of a descent, because of something being not the way it's supposed to be. On the contrary, it's, be, it's coming because of their tremendous mile, because of their tremendous high level that they are on that day. Meaning on this day, they're completely beyond the idea of rulership over people. Rulership means there's already some sort of connection to the people. Yes, I'm higher, but ruling over them. On the day of the passing, Moshe Rabbeinu is completely, completely higher than this descent of ruling over the people. And that's what it means, ain't shilto in b'yoyim amavis. Aye, then you could think that it means that when Moshe Rabbeinu is higher than the rulership, chas v'shalom, there's no connection between him and the Yidden. This is what the Pasuk comes along and says. That even as Moshe Rabbeinu is standing on this highest level, he says, hakilu elai, the Yidden are being gathered to Moshe Rabbeinu. Meaning the Yidden are, on the contrary, they're being elevated to the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. On this day it's being revealed how Moshe Rabbeinu and the Yidden are in essence all one. So that's the pshat, not chas, in other words, rather than him lowering himself down to the people, on this day it's being nizgala, how they are being elevated and becoming one with Moshe Rabbeinu. So that, but now we're also going to understand why is the Levim gathering the Yidin instead of the Koyanim. Generally, Chassidus explains that the difference in Koyanim and Levim, Koyanim are the level of chesed, kindness, drawing down from above to below. Levim are at the level of gvura, elevating from below to above. So if we're speaking over here about elevating the Yidin to the, late, the, way, the way Moshe Rabbeinu is right now in such a super elevated way beyond coming down to deal with the rulership over the Yidin, as we said before, on the contrary, the Yidin now are being elevated to Moshe Rabbeinu's level. This is specifically done through the Levim.